We're back here with another gimbal video and today we're going to be talking about gimbal settings and the best follow, control, and deadband settings for your Juin Crane 3S. This was a highly requested video on my DMs and my Instagram and even on YouTube and email. First, let's cover the motor strength settings. This is what we're gonna find within the ZY Play app, or if you have the smart control handle, you can access it via that system as well. So to access it via the control handle, all we have to do is go into the gimbal's menu and scroll down to motor and then right press on the dial. If you're using the ZY Play app, connect to your gimbal, press the icon on the top right of the screen, then press on strength. These settings are exactly the same on the control handle. So we have low, mid-low, medium, mid-high, high, and ultra. Ultra is gonna be for those cinema grade cameras such as Red Epics, fully loaded Red Epics and Red Dragons and Scarlets and all that other stuff. And even some C500 cameras as well. And even the high setting is for those cameras too. If you're using DSLRs like a Canon 1DX Mark III or Sony A9, Sony A7S II and so on and so forth, you're probably gonna end up choosing the low all the way up to medium option depending on how much you rig up your camera. As you can see here, I have my Sony a7S with a Zeiss 16-35 f4 lens. And to be honest, this camera setup is way too light, even with the tilted camera cage, which I have already on it. And the reason why it's too light is because I keep getting vibration issues with this gimbal. This gimbal is really meant for those heavier setups, which is why I added the Hollyland Mars 400 transmitter with a battery and it's still kind of light. However, if I have my Sony A9 camera with this setup, I don't have any vibration issues. Actually, without the transmission system, I don't have any vibration issues just because the Sony A9 is a heavier camera than the first generation A7S. Now, I don't know if Juin's gonna release the auto-tune feature similar to the Weeble S or the custom motor strength feature similar to the Weeble S, I'll talk to their engineering team and see if they're gonna come up with something like that. But as of right now, we only have these preset motor strength modes. So how are you supposed to know which motor strength setting is perfect for your camera rig setup? There's multiple different ways on how you can test this. One is by sound, two is by vibration, and three is by doing the bounce test. So first what I like to do is listen to the gimbal. Does it sound like it's struggling? Does it sound like it's about to uh, vibrate off of your table? Just hold your gimbal and feel it and see if it's vibrating. Now if the gimbal is vibrating, it's most likely that it has too much torque. So what I do suggest is going down to the low motor strength setting. However, at the low setting, if your gimbal still vibrates, I do recommend adding some extra accessories like a transmitter, light, microphone, anything that you have to make your setup heavier. This gimbal is very powerful, so it's not meant for those light camera setups. Another trick is to actually slightly off-center the gimbal or off-balance the gimbal, and this will make the motors work harder and you're gonna add invisible weight to your system, and most likely the vibration will go away with that as well. If you're slightly off-balancing your gimbal, it's not going to affect the smoothness, especially not with these larger gimbals because the motors are just so powerful. Another technique is to do the bounce test. So I like to take my finger and just tap it against the edge of the lens here and to see if the tilt axis is bouncing quite a bit. If it is, then you can start increasing your motor strength settings bit by bit, going to middle low, then medium, then mid high, high, just before you start to feel vibration. So you wanna get that sweet spot. I should also mention that you should check out my balancing tutorial on this gimbal right here. I also have the extension arm installed on this gimbal, allowing you to mount much larger cinema grade setups. I did a full tutorial on that. Go ahead and click on this video right here to learn how to do that because it is a little bit tricky. Now, as I mentioned before in this video, if you do have some issues on the lightest motor strength setting and you added your accessories slightly off balance, your gimbal and that should do the trick but just very very slightly and most of the time it's going to be your tilt motor that's going to be causing these vibrations if not the tilt motor then it's going to be your roll motor 
rarely, and I mean rarely, do I ever hear the pan motor vibrate. Now we get to start talking about the fun stuff. Let's go ahead and go into our ZY Play app, and this is where we're gonna make all the fine tuning controls. I've done this video for the Weeble S, Weeble Lab, and the Crane 3 Lab, but each gimbal is different, which is why I'm doing it for the Crane 3S too. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the ZY Play app. And at this time, obviously your gimbal should be connected. We're gonna go into the settings on the upper right-hand corner. We're gonna go to scene mode. And here's where we're gonna create our own custom presets for how we want the gimbal to behave. So I already created my own custom preset here called main. If I press on it, I'm gonna go ahead and hit on edit and these are my settings. Now for those of you who are new to gimbals and you don't know what any of this means, I'll quickly go over that with you right now. So first we have the tilt, roll, and the pan axis. So I'm gonna put my gimbal to sleep really quick so I can go over that really quick with you guys. So this is the tilt, this is the roll, and then this is the pan. So that's our tilt pan and roll axis. If we take a look at the app here, we have three different columns and we have five different rows. The follow rate, control rate, smooth degrees, dead zone, and reverse control. In the beginning of the video, I said dead band. However, dead zone and dead band are the same exact thing. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Follow rate is basically how quickly do you want the gimbal to follow your actual movements coming from your hands? So we have that adjustment, that's follow rate. Next we have control rate, which is basically the movements of the joystick. So how quickly do you want the gimbal to respond to the joystick? Next we have the smooth degrees, and the smooth degrees control the dampening of the gimbal. So if you notice, if you start panning or tilting and rolling with your gimbal, it slowly eases into that movement, and then when you stop, it slowly comes to a stop. That's the smooth degrees. Now dead zone or dead band is actually the amount of degrees you need to physically move your gimbal in order for the motors to kick in and complete that movement. And lastly is reverse control. So this is all about the joystick. Right becomes left, left becomes right, up becomes down, down becomes up. That's all it is. So if we look at the default gimbal settings by clicking on the upper right plus button, you can see the current settings on the gimbal by default. So 50, 25, 100, 2, 80, 25, 105, 60, 45, 105. These are okay, but I fine tune these adjustments to make them perfect. And the best part is, is that even though you may have a larger camera than mine, don't worry, the settings I'm going to give you will still work. You just might have to adjust the motor torque settings. So I'm gonna hit cancel and then go to main, which is the preset that I made. And you can see my settings right here. 90, 40, 102, 90, 40, 103, 80, 40, 103. These are the best reaction times that I get out of my gimbal using these settings. So go ahead and copy these down or screenshot the video and keep this with you because I know for a fact that these settings will be really, really good for you guys. And as for me, I just really like how the gimbal behaves now, especially when I need a little bit more speed on the pan and the tilt, it does not lag as much. And even when I need to slightly adjust the gimbal with the joystick, it responds just fast enough. Also, if you want to check out the Crane 3S, if you're thinking about buying it, check out the link down below in the description box because I'm sure you will love this gimbal. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.